My name is Eli, and I run Union Press. Uh, we are a letterpress print shop and design studio just outside Union Square, uh, which is where we got our namesake. Um, I have been printing here since 2010, uh, which is the year I graduated college. Um, I had been, the year prior to that, I had been in Nashville, Tennessee, doing an internship at Hat Show Print. Uh, Hatch is a letterpress print shop that's been around since 1879 uh, doing letterpress printing the traditional way with handset wood, metal type, and hand carved imagery. Uh, so I was there for a couple months and when I came back to Boston to finish my design degree I desperately wanted access to a print shop so I enrolled in a continuing ed class at MassArt. Um, there, the instructor introduced me to my current landlord, who owns this space as well as the majority of the equipment. I guess I would say he owns two-thirds, I've got one-third. Um, which had been left to him by, by the City Press. Uh, they were uh, a union offset and letterpress print shop in Somerville, operating from about 1953 until the mid to late 90s. Um, at which point they were no longer operating out of this space and left behind the equipment they deemed um, undesirable to them. Most of that being the, the letterpress printing equipment and the type. Um, so my landlord who saw the value in this um, you know, traditional and nowadays I guess vintage art form um, made sure it was kept in working order. Uh, when I was introduced to him in 2010, it was being unused, had been unused for, uh, I guess, almost a decade at that point. Um, and I needed a place to print, he needed some extra money, and uh, I started printing here, uh, I guess it was the, that summer of 2010 with a friend of mine, Kyle Nyland. Uh, that was quite a summer. Um, we, we hung out and we made prints and at some point people decided our prints were uh, of a certain value and they would pay us for our services. And um, I don't know, it was a, it was a cool, cool process for me to be able to use my design degree uh, but have a more hands-on and physical connection to my work. Uh, both the, the output but also the process of making the work that was important for, for me to have, have a heavier hand in it and um, you know, a more physical connection. So we spent the summer printing, people started paying us, we opened a bank account uh, and then I don't know eight years later here I am speaking to you. Um, <laughs> I guess that's the, that's the long and short of, of how I got here. Um, I have, I've been running, running the space as a, I guess as a small scale commercial print shop, uh, still doing things by hand, so the design happens, you know, with a, a pencil and paper, uh, and then I will look at some type and figure out what makes the most sense for the project that I'm working on. Um, and then any imagery gets drawn by hand, transferred to a linoleum block and carved by hand, so from, from beginning to end, there is, uh, there is the artist's hand, usually my hand involved in the process. Um, I will say that I do use the computer. I think it's a, a necessary tool uh, to run a business. Um, also, for parts of my design process, it's helpful and for clients to see a close approximation to, to the work that they will get, uh, the physical work, the printed work that they will end up getting. Um, but I, I guess I would stress that it's a, it's a tool, uh, not a means for production. Um, yeah, so I print a lot of posters and I'm super grateful that the local community, Somerville Union Square, has been super welcoming and accommodating um, in using uh, my services. 
Uh, I've printed posters for the Union Square Farmers Market, and I've done some sort of rope posters for Somerville Open Studios, um, some work with Somerville Local First, and other businesses and organizations. So I, um, I guess I'm happy to be a part of a community that values the arts and um, also values supporting other local businesses. I love, I think like I was saying, the, the physical nature to it. Um, you know, I'm required to take an active role in designing something. Um, I get to like, get dirty and make a mess and uh, that's always fun. The cleanup may be less so. Although organizing stuff is great, so I think cleaning up is also great. Um, I, I think I love the, like, the magic moment of putting something on press and taking a print and seeing it actually printed for the first time. Um, it is uh, for, for somebody who has never done any printing for them to come in and, and pull a print and sort of feel that magic I think is, is great and reinvigorating. Um, I think I'm, I'm very lucky to experience that on a pretty regular basis. So that magic moment is great. The, like, the history is, is so cool to think that um, you know, any piece of type that I pull out of a case in the room back there is, uh, it's got a history that predates my own. Um, I don't know, there's, I think there's something pretty fantastic about that too. I guess maybe some misconceptions are that I could have a poster printed for you tomorrow. <laughs> it's a, it's a slow process, a labor of love, if you will. Um, but I, I think that's also something that I really value about it is that you're required to slow down. There is no, uh, there is no faster. Uh, you go as slow as you physically can, and if something falls apart, you have to put it back together. Um, so, yeah, the I think the slower pace um, is maybe sometimes unexpected. There are people who are. Uh, very used to the, the immediate gratification that technology affords us and uh, when you take a few steps back in like decades, sometimes centuries, it's hard to grasp the concept that like, we have to slow down here too. Yeah, maybe that like more than one person works here. Uh, yeah. It's just me these days, so uh, I answer the emails or don't answer the emails, sometimes it gets bad. Um, but I, yeah, I, I don't know, pay the bills, uh, quote the jobs, print the jobs, sign the jobs. It's a, I don't know, it's a full-time job that I'm only doing part-time. I see a, a whole lot of value in it and a whole lot of freedom. Um, I, you know, can decide if a job is exciting and I want to take it on or I can decide that, you know, maybe I want to want to save my availability for, for another project so I can turn work away in that way. Um, I can make cool stuff as my own boss, and that's always fun. Um, but it's also it's tough in a as a as a visual um, or a person in in a artistic or visual field to sort of exist in like the vacuum of my brain and not have another set of eyes to to look at something that can be challenging. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. It's nice. Nice being a one-man show sometimes. Sometimes I wish I had some company. So that's, what, that's what the other jobs that I have are for. Uh, that and like a, I don't know, an opportunity to do something different. I think that's something fun. Is uh, Maybe that has more to do with like running a letterpress shop more so than being a one-man show. Um, but yeah, it, no, no day is exactly the same. Um, and doing something different all the time. Okay. So we're going to take some of this red and uh, it's going to go, I think at the top. Uh, so I'm going to spread it out to this top roller and then we'll put these rollers down and they'll all be in motion and uh, we can watch the, the ink mix. So that's, a, that's a really good shot, you don't want to miss that one. Um, so the ink will go right out to this roller. 
and we'll go kind of heavier to the top. And then we'll kind of press on, and kind of put our rollers down, and this is where it gets good. You all ready? I think this rainbow roll might be a little subtle, but I feel okay about that. I mean, I think uh, I think letterpress printing is a trend. Um, I might regret saying that, but it's a uh, yeah. I don't know, popularized or uh, rejuvenated or raised from the dead. Um, I don't know how many years ago, but I think some people some people cite that Martha Stewart is responsible for. Uh, this letterpress renaissance that we're seeing. Um, I think she featured some letterpress wedding invitations either on a TV show or a magazine and it uh, got super popular at that point. And I think um, it's also become a trend due to the fact that it's like the complete opposite of the way that we engage with um, visual information these days. Uh, so much of that takes place on a screen, whether it's a computer, or a smartphone or um, anywhere else, but to, to see something printed on a piece of paper and to feel the impression that the piece of type or the plate or the, whatever the printing substrate is um, has made in the paper, I think is, is exciting. Um, so many people who come through here tell me about the smell in the space and how it smells like a print shop. Um, there's ink in the air and you know there's ink on the paper too and so sometimes people smell the paper and so that uh, that experience that multi-sensory experience I think is is, uh, is good for people to have access to and um, yeah the I don't know the DIY culture that has flourished in the past 10 to 15 if not longer years um, has also contributed to the the trend that is letterpress printing and other other handmade crafts and things like that. Um, so yeah, letterpress is a trend. Um, making a really deep impression in the paper is also, that's like a more specific trend to letterpress printing. Um, you know, if we, if we can do something a little bit, we can do it a lot. Uh, and so like feeling that tactility from the impression in the paper is nice, but you really hammer that paper and you can really feel it. And, people get really excited um, <laughs> and that is you know that's I think that is a popular trend uh, in terms of modern letterpress printing and traditional letterpress printing the idea was to uh, just sort of kiss the paper and not make a really heavy impression um, if if somebody looking at a print couldn't tell that it had been letterpress that was a sign of like a um, a really proficient and uh, well-seasoned printer. Um, that's not to say modern printers are not well-seasoned, but the, the trends have changed. Sure, distressed type is also a, another trend that I think we've seen come and go and come again, and uh, I think it's something that is inherent to the, the letterpress printing process. The fact that, that no two prints look exactly the same and no two characters from the same font of type are going to look exactly the same. Um, they'll look the same in form, but uh, because each piece is uh, an individual, uh, there are qualities or characteristics that the other one might not have. Um, I would say, so some stuff I'm carving new, so like I made this last week. Um, and other materials, like the wood type, uh, this is probably anywhere from 50 to 100 years old. Um, some, uh, I, you know, I don't have exact dates on all of the type that's in here, but there's some of it that it's pretty obvious to tell. It's like, it's much older than some other type. Like this stuff here has never been printed. And you can tell just based on how clean the type is. Um, it doesn't have any uh, stains or patina on it. And then something like this type over here, we can definitely tell it's it's been around the block. 
Um, and sometimes it has like these pieces of paper on the back to add some pressure, bump it up so it prints a little bit better. Uh, and they're like, they're these very cool, I don't know, it's like archives of printed material and history. Um, more ornamental pieces. Um, these ones are kind of awesome. They're like two color blocks. So there's the, the car itself and then like the background that would go with it. Um, some really awesome like political pieces. We've got donkeys and elephants and I don't know. Some very cool historical archives. Uh, and then I'm just gonna grab a couple of trays from in here. So the story behind this shop is that it was it was called the City Press, and they were a union print shop in Somerville, uh, and they did offset and letterpress printing. And so we have left over. Uh, it, keep talking about this like archive of history, but all of these printing blocks or like um, printers plates, sometimes they were advertising cuts. Uh, sometimes they were in here. We've got a couple of pieces for like the American Legion. Uh, I have any number of like Somerville city seals. Uh, these are kind of funny. Those are dental plates, right? So like a dentist office would have those printed and then they could mark teeth that needed to be worked on uh, or note cavities. We've got capitals on the right hand side, lowercase on the left. Um, and it is organized sort of based on usage. So like the lowercase e has the largest compartment, which means we can fit the most amount of characters in there um, because it is the most commonly used character in the Roman alphabet. The smallest type I have in here is six point. And these like these sizes correspond to the same point sizes like on your computer, um, but like this is a a six point capital old English A, and I have I have a whole like a whole run of old English from six point all the way up to I think forty two point. There are there are instances where we need to. Uh, or rather a client who's working with us has a logo or a particular typeface that they're wanting to work with and if that's not something that's available in the shop uh, we'll take a digital file and send it out to have a plate made um, which will give us an exact replication of their digital file um, so it's, that's a really nice way for us to kind of marry the analog and digital processes and uh, I think for a long time I was pretty resistant to working with plates um, it didn't feel, didn't feel, uh, I don't know, honest to the process. Um, but I, I'm seeing more and more the value in, in working with plates these days. And it, it does a lot to extend the life of the machinery. Uh, not everyone has access to, uh, you know, to a library of typefaces uh, in either wood or metal. Um, and so being able to produce letterpress prints or um, to involve more people in the letterpress printing process and therefore to, um, you know, keep, keep print alive and well, I think there is, there is value in working, working from plates. Print on the levers backwards on trip, I'm able to roll that carriage to the end of the press and then all the way back. And I've just put some fresh ink onto that type. Uh, let me grab some paper. So, piece of paper and see how oh, close we are. Okay. Okay. Push that lever to print. My rollers go back down. I'm going to roll it all the way through. And that type is in contact with the paper. That looks pretty good. Um, because the type is, is made out of wood and it's seen some, um, seen some usage, some, some characters are taller than others, uh, some get inked up a little bit better than others. You can see we've got some, some nicks and dings in that down, but it adds some really great character to it. Uh, so I'm going to go through a quick process of bumping that type up, raising it up a little bit higher so that it prints a little more cleanly. 
they all they all exist independent of one another, right? And so you can increase the pressure to some parts and not to others. Um, if, for example, we wanted to uh, really emphasize the, the distressed quality that was oh so popular in the late 90s, early 2000s.